Why can't I get this? Am I stupid? Jesus. Have you guys ever felt that way? I know I have, after watching videos. When I decide to attack a new type of lock, like, like this ASA, one of the first things I do is I go onto YouTube and I see who's done it before me. And I try to learn something from their techniques, I try to figure out if there's any tricks, and I basically see what they can teach me. But lately I've been seeing a lot of videos that uh, I just can't believe. And so, the last couple of days I've been thinking a lot about this, about why it would be and how it is that they're doing it. And I thought it might be time to... Let's get it out in the open here, fellas. Um, the first clue to me when I'm looking at a deceptive video, when someone's trying to pull the wool over my eyes and fool me in some way, is that it's a low resolution. They've, they, they'll apologize. My normal video camera was stolen and I have to use my iPhone or my, you know, I, I can't find my video camera and I'm using my Android. And so you get a really low resolution video and it's really grainy. Or they'll do it in really bad light. Another one of my favorites, the guy will be sitting in the cab of his truck and the th it'll be at night and maybe you know, the only light you get is from passing cars, and just really horrible, horrible, very low lighting, just really a bad video. Another one of my favorites is uh, when they don't use a tripod. Everything's really jittery, and you're trying to see, and they're, they're in a moving car, and everything's moving like that, and it's just uh, no way for us to tell if he, what he's doing is real or it's not. So, you know, jittery or the, not using a tripod, holding his Android phone in one hand while doing something with the other, just is not very convincing to me. It show, gives me an idea of trying to misrepresent or mislead us, trying to con us. And by doing that, it makes me lose confidence. I have watched uh, these videos, and if I can't do it as fast as they can, or as neatly as they can, it makes me doubt my own abilities. And I think some of you, based on your, um, on your, on your private messages, uh, are starting to feel the same thing. So let's, let's look at what we can believe. This is an example of a lock that I do believe. When I see somebody pick a padlock, or a lock that's com a completely sealed unit, there's no way to remove the core, no way to modify the innards to make it easier, no way to do any of that kind of thing. If it's a, a completely intact lock and it functions the way it's supposed to, usually they pick it. Now, sometimes they pick it really fast. And, and that's okay. All that tells me is that they've probably picked it a lot before. They've choreographed it. In other words, they know the exact binding order, and so they pick it in pretty quickly, and that's fine. As long as I can learn something from it and they describe, you know, any little tricks or things about that particular lock that would be hel helpful to me, that's fine. I don't mind the choreographing. It's all of the rest of the stuff that does bother me. And the things that it, where it starts to bother me are things like any lock that has a removable core, anything that's easily modified. And to be honest, this is the lock that set me off, that got me really thinking about... <laughs> I watched a video, it's still on YouTube, a guy the other day uh, showing a master, uh, I'm sorry, an American lock. And it went pretty much like this. Okay, uh, American padlock, check it out. Six pins, look at that wild bidding. Wah, wah, wah. Okay, it works perfectly. And he stuck it in there. And he goes, I don't know why you guys are having so much trouble with these, because... You don't have to take a lot of time on these locks. These are so easy for me, and therefore you must be stupid if you can't open this as quickly as I can. And he stuck it in there. He pulled out one of these, and he started raking it. And of course, now that the video is going, it's not going to work for me. But uh, come on, baby. And he did it even faster than this because he had choreographed it. Whoops. See, this is even hard when you, you know that you've set things up. And bam! There you go, guys. It took me, you know, eight seconds to open this lock. There you go. Piece of cake. And then again, he took his six-pin key and he put it in there to prove to me that, again, that was the real lock and it functions perfectly. Well, you know, I don't know why he bothered. I really don't. We know what's inside of here. They're complex pins, and I've spent a lot of time trying to rake these locks. And for anybody to rake it that quickly, it just it, it's, phys it's just impossible. The odds are so against it that it could possibly happen that for him to presume that we would even 
excuse me, even believe him is it's just beyond my comprehension. What did he do? Well, you know, I fell for it. I went out and I said, oh my God, I've spent all these hours. And I spent another hour and a half trying to rake some of my American locks with no success, nothing. And then I thought, okay, it's a trick. What did he do? And he did exactly what I did to this lock. He removed the core, he removed the pins, and there's supposed to be six pins, uh, and I only put three in there. And instead of putting serrated pins or any other pick, I put standard pins to make them easily rakeable, unless you drop your pick, like I do. Now, of course, I matched it to the key, so it's still going to work with the key. It's just that only the first three pins are there. The rest of them are empty. So that's how this guy did it. So that's one of the things to keep in mind. Now, is, is that all? Well, he could have honestly put pins in there, but he might put the wrong kind. In other words, take all the security pins out and just put in standard pins. Maybe all six, maybe five. I mean, we have really no way of knowing unless he takes the time to gut it for us. And the guys that gut it, those are the only ones I trust. The ones that don't gut it say, there you go. Okay, I don't know why you're so dumb. I'm really smart. I got this open in eight seconds. And then end video. That's the ones we should be insulted by. Um, another thing I've noticed is uh, Euro cylinders. Guys will pick these, and this is a, a multi-lock. And I'm not going to insult you by going through this any further, but guys will pick these uh, in a very short amount of time, and then they'll say, oh, you know, uh, uh, I don't know how to remove. These are really complex mechanisms, and uh, it, they can't be disassembled. Well, you know, that's not true. Uh, in Europe, they change pins all the time. In fact, there is a special tool to remove the pins from these, and it costs it's about 50 bucks. But in all honesty, you don't need it. You could do this by hand. And the way you do it is you remove this C-clip, which is normally right here. You pop it off with a screwdriver, and then everything comes apart, fellas. You can remove all the guts. I'm not going to do it, but uh, you just push it out, and the lock portion comes out just as easily as this thumb turn version. And you can remove pins. You can change out pins, uh, and that's the weird thing about uh, these, especially multi-locks. These come with not so many security pins. They usually come with a lot of standard pins because in these locks, standard pins are much more difficult to pick. So guys will remove uh, um, standard pins and replace them with spools, which are much easier to pick. And that's one another way that they can possibly deceive us on this particular lock. So don't be fooled. If a, these are guttable, and if a guy doesn't want to gut it, that's fine. If he doesn't have the tools, that's fine. But don't try to deceive me that you can pick a multi-lock in you know one minute and eight seconds. It's just not physically possible unless it, it's missing all of the pins. Here's another one of my favorites, uh, Medico. Uh, let's say for a moment that I've just picked this uh, Medico for you, and I hold up my board of pins. There you go, fellas. Look at all these tricky pins. They're all real, blah, blah, blah. And then I say, now let's make sure the sidebar's there. And so I very carefully remove this, and I say, all right, there you go. There's that sidebar still in place. Okay, end of video. Thanks for your time. What did he really show us? And I think the answer is he didn't really show us. He showed us it has a sidebar. And maybe he really did pick it, but the thing we really need to pay attention to is, is it a real sidebar? And in this case, it is a real sidebar. Let me pop this in my hand. And when we look at these, and what I expect to see when someone does a gutting for me, they are those little arms sticking out, because those arms are what have to fit into the slot in the pins. And if you file off those arms, which is very easy to do, uh, all of a sudden you've neutralized the sidebar and then you no longer have to rotate the pins to the correct angle. All you have to do is elevate them and you're basically picking a five or six pin lock. That's it. So unless I see the sidebar taken out and I see that the, these arms are not modified, I am absolutely not convinced that it, it was the real deal. Well, what else can you do? Well, for this I'm going to need my tweezers. If you can if you're determined to deceive me, one of the things you can do, let me get this, get this to focus now. You can go through your pinning kit for your Medicos and you can select a pin that has only one gate. And these are in the pinning kits and this is one of them. There's only one gate, so it's impossible to find a false gate. You can't fall into it. So these, of course, are much easier to pick. Okay, 
if you don't want to do that, there's an even easier, cheaper, and faster way, and it also is more of a guarantee. You take the existing pin, which most of them do, oh crap, most of them do have false gates, like this one. If I can get my tweezers up here, get it to focus. There we go. The real gate is the one on the bottom, the deep channel, and that's the one that the sidebar has to fit into. And then the false gate, which I've highlighted with red ink there, that's the one that's designed to trick us, and those really make it difficult to pick medicos. Not, so we, get, it'll, we won't know whether we're at the correct angle when we rotate the pin or not. So what can they do? Well, again, you get the same hand file. You can file that groove, remove the part that's red, and you can widen the channel for the sidebar to fit into, and then you've multiplied your chances of picking this lock by probably tenfold. So that's another possibility. So if they don't show you the pins up closely, that's another thing you can suspect. This is a sidebar from, and this is going to be just a little bit hairy, this is a sidebar from an ASA. In fact, this is out of the ASA that I was picking at the beginning of this video. And it has, again, sidebars. These are a little bit wider. You could simply file those off, show the outside of the sidebar, say, there you go, end of video. Say, so we want to see the arms of those, uh, uh, the arms on that sidebar. The way that this works, and this is going to be a little bit tricky, is if you look at the pins, you'll see there's a little channel, and there's a, a gate between them. There's a, there's a little wall between the two grooves. And that's because you have to rotate these pins, these fingerprints, to allow that to fit into the gate. So you see, we can either grind off those gates, or we can get a grinder, a Dremel tool, and we can grind off that little wall between the two channels, and therefore neutralizing the rotational aspect of all the finger pins, making a very, very damn near impossible lock to open, very easy to open. So those are just some of the things that we should be looking for. I just, I've learned to be very, very suspicious of what I'm seeing on YouTube. I might be able to learn a few tips and tricks, but uh, I just, I just don't understand why. I guess that's my question. Why would you do it? There's really no money to be gained, believe me, from this. It's an expensive hobby, but no one is calling up to pay me money. Oops, sorry about that, but it reminded me of the infamous dying battery. It always seems to happen at the most inopportune time or the most sensitive time of a gutting, perhaps. You know, you keep that in mind. Anyway, like I said, there's no money, there's no fame in this at, at, at all. I just haven't seen my, my myself on the 6 o'clock news or any lock pickers on the front page of any newspapers lately. There's no sponsorship, no, no companies calling us up to offer us, you know, piles of free stuff or, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars to, you know, use their product. I'm still using my, my own homemade picks, for goodness sake, as are most of you. And there's no groupies. I don't have any teenage girls standing, to, you know, as I drive by, cheering me on, wanting me to get out and give them autographs. So why? And I don't know. I think the bottom line is that when it happens, we have to be vigilant to it. And when it happens, it's really hurting the entire sport. It's hurting us all. This deception is not doing anybody any good. It just creates a lot of self-doubt, a lot of ill will, and a lot of suspicion in the entire sport. Anyway, I have ranted and raved long enough. I uh, hope this was useful to somebody. Anyway, thanks for your time. Everybody stay safe and uh, stay legal.